Hello everybody and welcome back to another short video. Um, just showing you the sound that I fitted into the Helgen Class 27 which you previously saw in the last video briefly. Um, you're probably wondering in that case then why you're seeing a picture of a Pennsylvania RS1. Well, this engine is fitted with a Tsunami 2 decoder which is kind of hardwired into the main uh, body. It's actually a board replacement. And one of the things that I've been very impressed with, which I don't really see that much on British sound DCC diesels, is um, a feature they call uh, dynamic digital exhaust, or digital dynamic exhaust, one of the two. Um, and it basically it controls the... Uh, the sound of the engine automatically and I'll try and show you what I'm getting at so let me just start it up okay so that's running now if I was to press F5 each time I press it, it notches up one notch, okay? And F6 brings it back down again, okay? If I also move the engine, so speed step one, and you can see it moving away, it'll start, the engine sound will start to change. Probably hear the turbocharger moving there, just coming in and out. So let's bring it back into shop. Now these Tsunami 2s also have working brake. So you press F11 and you can put the brakes on and off, which I've only seen on one or two British decoders in the last year or so. But the Americans have been doing it for years. So one of the other features of these Tsunami 2s is that if the locomotive's on a hill or you put a lot of load behind it, it automatically changes the engine sound. And I can demonstrate that if I briefly hold the engine back while I try and move it forwards. So if I just hold it on the coupling and then start to move forwards, you'll hear the engine note increase. Now because it can't move, it's going to increase more and more and more because it's pulling against my hand holding it back. Okay. And if I let go of the locomotive, the engine note will drop as it pulls away. And off it goes. There we go. Probably just hear that drop down. So that means that when you're actually going around the track with a train on, if you get to a hill, and I've got plenty of hills, if you get to a hill, the engine note will automatically change to suit the conditions of the line that you're travelling on. And I haven't really seen that done properly with a British sound decoder. Now, I may be wrong, and I'm sure somebody out there is going to tell me if I am. And I hope I am. But let me get back to the... Class 27. So here's the Class 27. It's an Elgin model. It's a very nice model. And it's got an 8 pin decoder socket in it, which has been fitted with a Lego Mambifo sound. Now, Lego Mambifo uses an ESU decoder, and that's fine. That's, it seems to work very well. It's nice and programmable and um, very easy to set up. I, in fact, I've not had to set anything up on this apart from turning the sound down because it was extremely loud when it first when I first got it working. It was easy to do, and I'll just briefly show you what I had to do in order to get it uh, to install the the, uh, the speaker. So the speaker is under 
fuel tank. So if you buy a Lego Man Biffo um, decoder, he can sell for a class 27. He can sell you a fuel tank, which is a resin cast um, item, and you can stick the speaker that he supplies inside it, underneath. It's really good. And um, that's held in with some PVA glue. Um, unfortunately, to get the old fuel tank off of the Helgen model, it virtually fell to pieces in trying to get it off. It's not a simple clip-on thing like some of them. And um, and when you get to that point and you think, well, what am I doing? Is it really going to work? But yes, it did work. And yes, it looks fantastic. It also sounds fantastic, so let's give this one a start up. So let's put the number in, 5403, and then you press enter, and function one is the engine start. One of the nice features of these is that uh, the Helgen body for the 27 is very slightly wider than the chassis so the speaker wires actually can run down the inside of the body between the body and the chassis which makes it very easy to uh, install your sound uh, your speaker all you have to do is just drill a small hole at 45 degrees where the wires go into the fuel tank and it's so easy so this is the sound it's now starting up You just have to love that sound, don't you? I'm not going to go through all the features of the uh, functions and stuff because most of those have been covered in previous videos and there's plenty of videos where they just go over and over all the different sounds and stuff. But you have all the bells and whistles and the doors and the clanking buffers and the Spirex valve and all of those things. But what you want to really see is what it sounds like when it pulls away. I think you've got to admit that's a pretty damn good sound. I'll bring it back into shot. Now these ESU decoders that Lego Man Biffo uses is the, the version 5, it's the new one. And it does have a working brake feature which does seem to work fairly well. Um, and it has the speed hold as well so you can have it going really slow. Okay. You can press F8, which keeps it going at that speed, and then you can use your uh, throttle control to vary the engine note. And you can do a coasting as well. Now that's brilliant, that's very good, but the only thing I would say to that is that you're actually driving the sound of the engine and not the actual engine itself. And if I, when it comes back into shot, if I was to hold it like I did with the previous locomotive, nothing changes. So therefore the sound isn't being driven by the current required of the motor, of the locomotive. So which is kind of a shame, but 
I haven't found another decoder in the UK that does similar to what with Tsunami 2 does. Now this is to not, I'm not knocking Lego Brick Roman sound, the sound is amazing, I'm very happy with it, but it just doesn't quite seem to control the sounds like I would expect from the American one. So there we go, that's the Helgen Class 27, it's got the Lego Man Biffo sounds and I guess you really want to see it on a train going round before we finish. Bring it back into shop. So that's the brake working. Now on the um, Tsunami, uh, one thing that I didn't mention is that if you stop the engine on the train, uh, on the brake and then try and drive away, the brake is actually still on and you can't drive away. These ones, I've got the brake on, still function 5 and it will still pull away. So the brake is just the sound and the change in the CV for deceleration rather than um, an actual brake that will hold the engine and keep it stationary. So there we go. So I just wanted to demonstrate the brake feature on the Tsunami 2 just once more um, because this is quite an important feature. So if I just move the engine out of the way, you can hear it spooling up as it drives away. Okay, bring it back into shot and I'll stop it using the brake. On the Tsunami 2, that's function 11. Okay, so that's now stopped using the brake, you heard the brake screw. Now, if I try and drive away, it won't move. The, the engine will go there, it'll do everything it wants, but it won't move. Now, if I now, if I now release the brakes, okay and keep the power on, the engine will suddenly shoot off. So let's try that. Release the brakes now. And you hear, hear the engine die away because it doesn't need the power anymore because the brakes have been released. What a fantastic demonstration. So there we go, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that short video and look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.